after just a couple of years of, of really hard engineering work and development work in the labs and the use of machines like the one behind me, we are going to be in a position to put the very first piece of metallic hardware, a valve, this particular valve, on a Navy nuclear aircraft carrier that was 3D printed for the first time. That particular technology is, is one that I'll give credit to some of our engineers, um, in particular, Dr. John Rawls, who approached uh, myself and a few others uh, just a couple of years ago with a thought that, that if, if we worked hard enough at it, that additive manufacturing might become something really important from, uh, for us from a transformation perspective. To be part of uh, something that's really changing to how we do business has been excellent. Um, if you asked me 10 years ago, would I be working on taking powderized metal and lasers to make a part in three-dimensional shapes? I don't think I could have envisioned that at all. You know, it wasn't until, you know, I'd say five or six years ago that I got more involved in the, the metal and the plastics, and it wasn't until a few years ago, like Charles mentioned, that I actually got immersed in uh, actually going through all the steps, the regular, to advance the state of the art and go uh, qualify a part for actual application use. Today it's the time of, of the engineers and craftsmen that have ownership of these very perishable skill sets and the opportunity to defend our nation. It's their time to do what their predecessors did 70 years ago, but to do that with a new set of tools, with new technologies. Um, if you can't get excited about that, you just can't get excited.